Uh, jo na tandika kula kusatulinga nsumesa kuchetuita papasi mulugan muluzungu uh, last wednesday i started by teaching about what we call papas era nenyenyola nengama anti omuntu bulichintu tutamanya bwachi cha kolebwa tutandiko kuchonona and we say that once we never know the use of something we misuse it Mwotamanya bovuna mugaso Gwa Tugambe microphone eno jengu tesengo juo mtu nga tajimanyi Ayenzo jifole chisekula ebinyewa If you give this microphone that I'm holding To someone who doesn't know its use They can use it as a pounding stick So ensonga luachebi ntubinji biono nedua Kubanga babi ina temamanyi mugaso guabi and the reason as to why many things have been misused and spoiled, it's because the people having them do not know they are used. So, fenatu ino bovuna anjizibwa, oboku manya, ntibulichi ntukunsi katonda chia tonda, ya chitonda nga chino omogaso. So, we all have the responsibility of understanding that whatever God created on earth has a purpose. Mwembanga kana katebe kentu ndemu baka tonda nga baka tonda, Kubanga ba manyi ntikaino kubanga kwa cheka situla wa guru Katebe kano kaina Echigende lwa Katu ukirize echigende lwa chia katonda Factory ya kakola Na uomu nto ina Echigende lwa chika tonda ya kutonda If this seat I'm sitting on Is fulfilling its purpose As to why the manufacturer uh, Made it You also as a person sitting on it Has a purpose as to why God created you Kugambi bulichintu Omogaso guacho reguta manjibwa Echidla kukubela kuchono I've told you that misuse Comes after someone Not knowing the purpose of something Sometimes it's not even misuse It's abuse Ulutumu chibela na kubango Ulinga achivumie So jakwe gendele zanti Bantu banji bali mubula mu Bebali muku mukuvuma, bebali mukuono na kubanga teba tege la bula mwa bwa bwina ensonga ila bwino mula mwa. So you'll find that people in their lives they are abusing their lives because they never understood that their lives have a purpose. Ah, butu ogera ku begende roba ah chigende la bula mo chigende la chovu la mo. So whenever we talk about the purpose of life, in our lives, all oh, what we hear poses a lot of questions that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, the greatest question is, where did I come from? That is a question every person who has a purpose should be posing to himself. Where did I come from? I have to look out for its answers. And those answers are not far. Just get on nafuna bibuzo bitufu. It is you who hasn't got the right questions. Bumalo kubuze chibuze cho. Kubuze chibuze cho kubiri. After posing the first question, you get the second question. Nkola chiwano. What am I doing here? Omuntu no zuka kumacha. Someone wakes up in the morning. Obude no busibam. And you go through that day. Ne buziba. And it comes to evening. Ne webaka. You sleep. No zukuka. You wake up the next morning. No senyamanyo. You blush your teeth. No naba. You bathe. No genda kumulimu gota ya gala. And you go to the job that you do not love. No kulira boss gota ya gala. And you work for that boss that you don't love. Wa kusasulu wa musala gota ya gala. They pay you a salary that you don't like. No dayumu kayumba gota ya gala. And you go back in the house that you don't like. Wundi chibuzo chidi inti... So the question is, what am I doing here? And then another important question. Nzani. Who am I? Chibuze cho, chibuzo cha, cha identity. That is a question of identity. Bulurota manya chicholi. Whenever you do not understand what you are, then you cannot understand or spot the areas where you're useful and where you're useless. 
because of what I am Man, as for something. I, I know the places where I am useless. I know the places where I am useless. And I am so much encouraged when someone tells me, I don't understand what you preach. And if I want to ask that person, I just pose one question, then I know which category that person is. Because a person who does not understand my message, I know why they don't understand. I am not a person of jokes. I am always in the middle of the Bible. So if you do not read your Bible, it means you cannot understand. If you do not have time to think down and meditate, when you're not a person who thinks, you cannot understand. It. If when I'm preaching, you cannot sit down to concentrate, you cannot understand. What I preach. If you do not take notes of what I preach, you cannot understand. So I do not get annoyed when you, I come and you tell me you don't understand. Because I know the category of people that I am useful to. And I also have another category of people I benefit. So I do not fight battles to say, why don't you understand me? Why? Because every person has a certain category of people whom he has been called to. And yet some categories in life, you just have to mount them. Maybe you are still below the category of people that I benefit. What category of people do you feel that you benefit? Are they children? Are they old people? Are they people who have not yet gotten saved? Oh, the people who backslid. People who love deep spiritual things. Oh, people who just love salvation. So what, so what category of people do you feel within your heart that they are the people you feel like you have to talk to? If you've not yet reached that level, you will not be able to be of benefit. Because your use is in that particular place where God has called you to serve. What category of people are on your heart? Or what category of problems do you see that other people do not see? This microphone that I'm holding is so much useful to me. But also the coat I'm putting on also is of benefit to me. The shoes that I'm putting on are so much useful to me too. But at the same time, the tablet I'm holding is of use to me. My specs that I'm putting on have their own use. If in other worldly things they are different in categories, but they are also useful. Now, do you think that we all have to resemble? It is, it is unfortunate that it's in the in the church where you find people say we have to be the same, we have to be the same. It is nowhere in the Bible where it says that we all have to be the same. Mukama fe watu sabida to bere ne yun to bere mu bumu uh obumu te buttegeza wulia u tebategeza kubeda mu uniform or unity is not uniformity. Bianjaulo. Where our Lord Jesus Christ asks us to be united, unity does not mean uniformity. I don't know whether you understand. 
tatulete la kufana gana atulete la kubanti tetufana gana diversity bachita diversity all of us whenever the holy spirit comes within our lives he brings out the, about diversity not uniformity oja kwetegereza anti mu bible mu sura ya 12 yaba korinthe kisoka basomesa ensonga yo kubanti tuli mu bidigwa kristo irene bagama anti fenna tetufana gana eliso Terifana gana bigere, ebigere, tebifana gana mikone, mikono tejifana gana ansingo. Nenga fena tu savi nge chintu chechimo. You'll find that in 1 Corinthians 12, the Bible teaches about diversity, whereby it shows that we are not the same, like the eye is not the same as the nose, not the same as other body parts. Teri chintu chiruma kunsi kuvako. There is nothing as painful as living this earth without discovering your purpose. Your eternal wealth is in what you are doing here on earth. And unfortunately, you may not be be knowing or understanding what you're doing on earth. We are here on earth for a limited time. And that time, it is already measured. It has somewhere it began from and it has its end at you don't determine that so ebi sere ebyo wakati wo kuzaliwa ko no kufa ko walwe ebintu byokola so between your date of birth and your date of death there are things that you're supposed to do na yo bi manyi but do you know what you're supposed to do o manyi chokola o ina chokola enewe do you know what you're doing or do you have something you're doing um uh, Nabagambi nti okuzula okuyitibwa ko obo kuzula echigende rwache chakuleta kunsi ochizula chicho ne katonda ya chikuwa I told you that it is God who gave you your purpose but it is you to discover that purpose Bona soma moyokana esule 10 no munana olunyiriri olwa satu mwo mukago kukawansi Paka kulu njiriri oruana, tuina wo story ya ponti ya spirato ni mukamafe yesu. When you read in John 18 from 36 downwards, we have a story there of Jesus and Pilate. Embo zeye nyumanyo kubanga mukamafe ya gaba nila muwebi intu ebi enja ulu. Boboji somye bulunji ebi inzo kukwa atako na ugama mukamafe wabalo oze zabuati. That conversation is so much interesting that when you read it, you get insights of how our Lord was thinking and you say, I ought to think the same way. Uh, story And this story begins with verse 33. What? This is what it says. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Aopirato, na ingina na te mchigango, na ita yesu, na mugamba, antigwe kabaka waba yudaya. And Jesus answered, Are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Yesu na damu, chino ocho ogede kububuo so Jesus was uh, concerned because this um, uh, government official asked such a crucial question. And I, Jesus knew that these guys do not have time to sit down and do research. Yes, Kubanga ya labo mkungu no wa government ingabuzi ze chibuzo abala chibata inabude kubuza. So he's concerned. Kakati, He's asking this uh, government official, Ngabu are you speaking mkungu. for yourself about this or did others tell you this concerning me? Then Pilate answered uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a way of question, uh, questioning Jesus. He says, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. 
what have you what have you done kakati pirato adamu nga naye engeri ja adamu atamubuza kibuzo na mugamba anti nze ndi mu yudaya abegwanga lyamwe ne bakabona abakuru be bakundetedde okoze echi sometimes jesus uh, does not take the obligation to answer some questions but i really love him here that he took time to answer him ebisere bisinga yesu te atwala nga budde kudamu bibuze bimbuzidwa ne muluno olugero wano yatwala obudde na muddamu and jesus answered him in verse 36 mulunyo rasa tumu mukaga yesu na muddamu my kingdom is not of this world na mugamba anti obwaka bakabwange sibwa nsimu so don't be scared i'm not here to take your kingdom kakati toti ya kubasiri wano kutwala obwaka bakabwo my kingdom if my kingdom were of this world my servants would fight so that i would not be delivered to the jews but my kingdom is not from the from here kakati namugama ntino singo bwakabaka bwange bubadde bwa munsi muno basajja bange bandi rwanye naye obwakabaka bwange siwa abayuda i think you get to know what is going on now in the mind of pilot pilot kakati ndowozo okuba mwaka fana nyo kutegera chechi genda mu birowozo bya pirato i just want you to imagine uh, these romans have taken over all the kingdoms of the world and the only king that is known is caesar and this young man is saying that uh, there's another kingdom that is not yet conquered and I'm from that kingdom kakati njagala olowoze munga abaloma bagenze bawambe nsizo na ngo bwakabaka babo be bufugira mu nsizo na eranga kabaka omwamanyidwa e kaisali kakati atona jagamba ntizo bwakabaka bwange sibwa mu nsimuno and if it was from here my men would come and destroy you eranga mugamba ntino singo bwakabaka bwange obadde bwa mu nsimuno abasajja bange bandize ne balwana ne bakusanyaao then pirate asked the pastor verse 37 he says therefore pirate therefore say to him are you a king then ao pirate amudamu linyorwa satumo musamvu na mugamba nti kale gwe oli kabaka jesus answered him you say rightly that i am a king ah yesu na mudamu na gamba nti ye ochogedde ndi kabaka for this cause i was born kubanga nze nazali rwecho and for this cause i have come into the world necho chechande tamunsi i hope you can underline those words if you've understood them for this cause i was born bobango tegedde bigambo bino bisaze ko mu bible yo kubanga agamba kulwecho chenava nazali bwa for this cause i have come into the world era olwecho chenyini yesonga lwachi najja munsi what caused your birth chi echale tero kuzali bwako what caused your coming into the world era chi echale tera okujja ko wano munsi mega questions chi chibuzo echinene jesus uh, gives us one of the biggest statements in the in the whole scriptures kakati yesu atuwa statement yemu kuzisinga obunene mu byawandike babyonna he says for this cause i was born ngagamba ntinze nazali rwecho for this cause i have come into the world era necho chechande tesa munsi what caused your birth gweche chaletero kuzali bwa what caused that woman to miss Nine months of periods era che chaletera mama wo okusubye mwezi mwenda ngatagenda munsonga why did that woman carry you nine months era lwacho muchalo ya kusitula mulubuto lwe okumala emyezi mwenda why were you protected and there was no miscarriage era lwachi wakumibwa nyo olubuto lwe lutasowoka there was a cause for that wali we nsonga kulwecho have you ever taken the initiative to understand that cause wali otwa deko obuvunanyizibwa okutegera ensonge eyo have you ever gone before the maker your creator and ask him why am i here wali ogenze komo masogo omutonzi wono mubuza lwachi ndi wano are you doing that which was on the mind of the creator when he thought of you to bring you where you are right now era or skaka santi okole echo echali kumutwe no kulowoza ko mu kronzi wo bwe yali akutondo kuleta wano kunsi do you really consider that uh, your coming here was not your initiative era ochirowoza muno tegera anti no kujja ko sigwe ya kisalawo there is someone who decided it there is someone who looked on the planet earth and saw a problem that only you in heaven could come here and 
to solve that problem. Do you know you came here on this planet earth because there was a need there was a gap, there was a problem for you to solve. And for this cause, Jesus says, I was born. For this cause, I have come into the world. Here, that I should bear witness to the truth. You see why he is here? that he may bear witness to the truth. Wherever he was, he was to bear witness of the truth. You should not forget that in John 14, verse 6 and 7, he had said, I am the way, the truth, and life. John 14. Then verse 6 or seven. And he says, I am the way. I am the truth. Here he's telling us, I, for this cause I, I was born and for this cause I came into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Sometimes we need to sit down and reconsider and look at the truth. Uh, of the word and uh, get it absorbed into our systems. I just found out that we don't learn by shouting at us, we learn by teaching us. It is only in the church where you find the teacher shouting as if he's chasing mosquitoes and uh, in school it's not like that. In fact, all the behaviors and bad habits you have, they were not shouted at you you got them slowly by slowly and you digested them. So that's why today I'm taking that approach. So he says, I should bear witness to the truth. And he continues to exclude Herod. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Now that was a, a, a big nail in the life of Pontius Pilate. That caused him to ask this question. What is truth? One of the biggest questions that have been asked the right person. Because if you ask someone who has come to bear the tr be witness of the truth and he calls himself truth and you ask him what is truth, you're asking the right person. This man had represented all of us in asking such a a right question to our Lord. Because this same man had said in John chapter 8, verse 31, 32, that if you continue in my teachings, you will be my disciples. Indeed, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So 
bwe mune yongera mu kigambo cyange muri manya amazima na amazima gali bafura abedembe so are, he was asking the right question what is truth that thing that can set us free what is truth kubanga wane yali abuzize kibuze kitufu era ngabuza amazima chechi aga amazima gasobola kutufura abedembe because this young this uh, man who is going to be killed is saying that he came here to bear the truth and the people that hear him all of the truth so we want to know tell us so that we can be on your side kakati omusajjo no yesu yali agenda okubanga tibwa yali amazo gamba ati nonzi zizo kutegeza amazima ataba amazima bokabe bampulira kati agamba ntinno tubulira amazima chechi and john captured for us this scene kakati yokana yaliwo nga tubulira ebyali bigenda mu maso i wish he did not write it there there are certain things i read in the bible and i'm like i wish uh, this was not even written. Kakati waliwe bintu byensoma mu Bible olumu ne ngamba kale singa kino te chawandikibwa. There is one time when uh, uh, John uh, 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 Solomon said that the more you know the truth the more you get pain. But truth is painful. Eh? I mean knowledge is painful. Eh? You get knowledge and you get pain. Eh? So whenever I read this portion of scripture verse 38 of John I really wonder what was wrong with this Pilato's head. Kakati waliwo Sulemani wagamba ntino joko mu kutegeera ebintu chikuletero obulumi kakati waliwo wensoma olunyiri no rasa tumo mulana ningambo bache chali ku mutugwa pirato no ngabuze chibuze the right question chisokanga abuziza echibuze chitufu in the right time mukasera katufu to the right person atengo chibuzizo omuntu omutufu and here what john captures for us kakati wano ulira yokana chicha atuandikira kwebye byaliwo Pilate said to him what is truth Pilato namugamba anti amazima chechi and when he had said this bwe yamalo okwogera echi went out to the Jews na furuma na te na agenda wali abayuda and said to them nabagamba anti i find no fault in him at all siraba musango kuye at first glance okumulaba ko bulabyo gwasoka at first glance at this scripture Ah uh, when we saw kero kutunulire chiwangu dikuba chino ogusoka You don't see any problem in it Tochiraba mu buzibu bonna Because you are not the teacher of the word Kubanga go toli musomesa wa chigamba Me I see a problem bigger problem better than Adam and Eve there is a problem here Wanonda ba wo obuzibu obwa manyo nyo obusinga no ba Adam ne Eve You've asked Jesus what is the truth Kati obuziza Yesu You've been asking him questions and he is, is answering. Now you have come to the crucial question. What is the truth? You don't wait for the answer and you go outside. Read the scripture again. Now you can see it. I don't know how foolish you can be. You ask Jesus what is the truth? And John says after asking that question. He went outside. Inafuruma. He didn't wait for the answer. Today we will not be searching for the truth. We will just come to this portion where Pilate asked Jesus what is truth and Jesus answered would have answered because Jesus told us you will know the truth. Kubanga twandi badde tujanga buzi wano wano Yesu nga akizze mu kubanga Yesu yatugamba twe muri manya amazima we wouldn't take long would just come here and get the answer from Pontius Pilate twandi badde te tutwala budde bunji twandi zenga wano tufuna okuddamu uh, kwa baba Pilate but when he asked the question na yate buye bwe yamalo buze chi went outside like many of us can ask questions some ask questions to challenge others ask questions to add in their nonsense others ask questions to support their answers others ask questions so that they can do what they have already wanted to do they needed someone to support it and others ask questions so that they can do live the right way. I don't know why this man asked this question. This is not my contention today. My thing is Jesus says for this cause I was born for this cause 
I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Jesus is very clear about his purpose on earth. You know these men knew very well why they are here. Why are you here? Of all lunch hours, why are you listening to this? Because once you know who you are, you get to know what will help you achieve or help you become better in what in that which you have. The reason why we go wherever and whenever all the time we are involved in everything because we don't know who we are. So you are an intercessor, an interpreter in the children, in elementary, you are lead, the lead of the elementary class, you are on the radio, worship team, prompter, on the camera. I mean, are you the almighty? You can't do, you're, you're just wasting people's time. And you know, you're not wasting anyone's time, you're wasting your time. Because you have a limited time to do that which you're supposed to do. And in the period of time that you have, it is in the period of that time that you need to find out what you came to do. It's the same time that you have to sharpen it. But it's the same time you have to execute it. So you're finding it out. You're planning for it. And you have to execute it. Those are the three levels of life. Those are the three levels of your purpose. There is a stage where people are helping you. They are doing um, uh, they are preparing you for your purpose. They are teaching you the language. They are teaching you the way to do things. They are teaching you all the culture. They are taking you to school. They are doing all those sorts of things that are going to help you to achieve what you're supposed to do here on earth. Yeah, in Romans chapter 8, the Bible says all things work. All things work. I'll just want to uh, clarify a certain verse so that I don't talk things that are off. Verse 28, it says, and we know that all things work together. You can, you can, you can interpret directly. Okay. And we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. So, be it that the stepmother was tormenting you, be it that you grew up in a life that was kind of bad, the Bible says if you love God and you are called according to his purpose, everything is driving you towards fulfilling that which brought you here on earth. Kakati oba walwo step maza kubonya abonya obo ita mbula mu obutali bulunji nekwe kasto bango ya gala katonda era nga waitibwa kuluechi gendiri ruache byonna bikutwale yo all things good or bad they don't work for all of us 
They work for only those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So there comes another word that disturbs us a lot. Which is called calling. You know when we talk about uh, purpose there are other words that are close to it. That work together with it. The first word is calling. Another word is talents. Skills. Ability. Vision. Assignment. Uh, which other word? Uh, assignment, calling, dream. You see all those words around the purpose. So uh, let me first put away the word uh, calling. So in the Bible, Bible, they have told us to walk worthy of the call. It is Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. Chevambe gaili ranzo msibe mumukama wafe okuta ambulanga ngabwe so what is purpose purpose is original intent purpose is the cause so once you find out your purpose and you're prepared for your purpose you were called. We are, we are all called to minister. But we are not all called in ministry. We are all ministers. We have a call of ministering. Your job is ministry. You being a housewife is ministry. Your parenting. Intercession is ministry. What I'm doing is it's what I call a call to minister here. So when God calls you, in fact in the Bible we have like three types of calls. We have what we call the higher calling. That is Philippians chapter 4, 4 verse, verse 1. Philippians 3.14 He talks about the higher calling. The higher calling is that high call that comes from God. We have many callings. But this one is high because it is divine. Then we have what they call the heavenly calling. It is in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Then we have what we call the holy calling. That is in, uh, the other one is in Hebrews chapter 3, verse, uh, Hebrews 3 is heavenly, 2 Timothy 2, 9, 2, 2 Timothy 1, 9 is holy calling. Uh, uh, Timothy 1, 9. Uh, Timothy 1, 9. Let us read it. Because it is good to understand those things in the Bible. Because you will see in chapter 12 of Genesis, we see the call of Abraham. We don't see any call of Isaac. We find the call of uh, Jacob. 
we see the call of Isaiah. We see the call of Moses. We see the call of Joshua. But they have been in the ministry. They have been doing things for God. Now they are called for a distinct occupation or a distinct space to occupy a certain space, to do a duty in that small period. That's what they call a What does it say? Timothy, you see, when you were served, it was a call to a holy living. What is holiness? Holiness is being set apart. Is being distinct. Is being unique. So uniqueness is holiness. You don't do things like other people do them. You don't do things because others are doing them. You're doing things because that is what defines you and that's why you are called and that's why you're living. Now this is a holy calling. As a Christian, you're supposed to walk a life that is holy. That one is called the holy calling. So as we talk about call and a purpose. It's after a season of being prepared and when you enter a phase of self-preparation or personal preparation, that's when God calls you. So that is very important that each one of us should understand it. Philippians 3.14 Hear what Paul says. 3.14 Paul says this. I press toward the goal for the prize. 3.14 so with this kind of call we press on it is a press it comes out of understanding that there is a prize it is not just being born again but there is a prize. In fact, if you read from verse 12 he says that not I have already attained it. Oh, I am already perfected. But I press on that I may lay hold of that which Jesus Christ has laid hold of me. Now, there is a reason why in your family Jesus called first held you. So, Apostle Paul is saying, I'm not living a life that I've, I've got it all. I'm not yet perfected. But remember, he is, is in prison and is about to die. But he says that he says he has not yet attained it. He says that I press on. The press here they are talking about is pushing for uh, having personal disciplines, praying, fasting, all those spiritual disciplines that cause us to know Christ deeper. 
kakati okuluubirira kuno kwa gamba anti nduubirira zibere mpisa gweze wete kamu okusaba okusiba okwele sebi ntu byonna na yenga oina choluubirira that the reason why he is doing that that he may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus he lead and hold on him brethren I do not count myself to have apprehended it. But one thing I do. He does one thing. The problem with us, we think that we are multitaskers. That is wrong. You can be a multitasker, but yet you sing is you're single focused. Because if you do many things, you cannot be perfect in doing many things. Even Jesus said you cannot serve two masters at a go. You'll either make, you'll be royal to one and disroyal to the other. So he says, this one thing I do. And this, we should copy this from him. What does he do? Forgetting the things which are behind. It is very hard to forget yesterday's victory. It is very hard to forget the achievements of yesterday. It is very hard to forget the problems of yesterday. You find many people are living in the past. Either in past glory. If you talk about the glory of yesterday, you are in danger. The food of yesterday does not help you today. It is feces. So the glory of yesterday does not help you today. Only it can do it, it can signal to you that it was joyful, it was pleasant, let us continue to push for it. He says this one thing I do. Forgetting the things which are behind. Reaching forward to those which are ahead. In other versions, NIV says, I stretch. We have people that are not stretched at all. They want things to find them there. We are in a Bible marathon. Someone failed even to enter any of any of the of those, maybe even ten reading ten chapters, because many of you failed to read the forty chapters. You must now be falling in the next category. You don't want to stretch. Others in businesses, you want capital, but who, who, where do we get capital? Capital is got from salary, from selling what you have, or from getting a loan. Kakati haba singa mwagala capital kola business, ninga mwemulo uza capital avawa, avamu musala, avamu kutunda biosu biokolo, oba kubako biokolo. You no sell your property sell. which they gave your fathers gave you. No tunde bio, biachitawo yibakuwa. Or you go and get a loan in bank. Oba no gena mulo, mubanka no wewa. Or we can use the word capital in Greek which means brain. So we say you don't have capital, you don't have a brain. Oba tu sawulo kole solo Greek, mgaluga mantino capital, so we need to stretch. Things are at a small distance if you stretch. If you push a little bit in prayer, things are there in the corner. If you push a little thing in, in business, in doing things better, in having a mindset of doing things with quality and excellence. Things will come our way. So Paul is saying this one thing I do. I forget the things that are behind me. And I stretch. What are you stretching? People don't have even goals. An average Christian you ask them, what are your goals? What is your vision for this year? 
What is the plan of your life for five years? And you tell them, are you going to be here in five years? He says, me, me, I'm not going to die. And you ask them, well, how are you going to be here in the next five years? Are you going to live on handouts all the time? Are those people, are you having, are you living in other people's plans? What if one day they don't think about you? What will happen to your children? And if you don't plan for your life, you're already planning. You have planned failure. You're reducing them to beggars. You're reducing them to being, a, a, you're reducing them to be people that are going to be working for others. So this concept of stretching, the things that are ahead of us, it means they are there, you know they are there, you have set them. They are far away from you. They will need stretch. They will need faith. They will need the grace of God. With the hand of God upon your life. And this head. And these hands. And these legs. You will achieve it. But you will need to stretch. You need to put there a goal before you. You cannot live a life without God. Goals. You should be having spiritual goals. You should be have, have, having physical goals. We should be having health goals. We should be having family goals. Serious life is an investment. So if you don't think, think about you investing, you are at a waste. So, understand this. Paul says, because before him there is an upward call or an heavenly call, he says, I stretch. What are you stretching? What do you want to get? It's far away from you. What is that which is far away from you that you're asking God to help you that you may reach it? What are you using the how are you using prayer to pull something towards you? And what are you pulling if you don't have goals? Really? We, we people plan for businesses. We plan business. for what we are going to put on tomorrow. We plan what we are going to put on Sunday. You have even planned what you are going to eat today. What makes you think that you don't need to plan? for your spiritual life. That it just happens. Paul is telling us this one thing I do. I look at the things that I fail to achieve. I look at the things that I fail to achieve. And I look at the things that I've achieved. And I put them behind me. So that I can get forward to what I want to achieve. And if you don't have a plan, and if you don't have goals for your life, you're going to live in the past. You're always talking about your auntie. You're always talking about your grandmother. You're always talking about those days, those days we used to pray, those days. I hate those people. Now, are you a monument? Well, aren't you praying if you used to pray? You pray to stop praying. 
So it is quite important for each one of us to know that there is a call that is awaiting each one of us. What are you doing about it? We have the heavenly call. We have a higher calling. We have a holy calling. And Paul is telling us walk worthy of the call. If you talk, we checked and came close to you. Which kind of walk, which kind of call is determining, is this making your way, is, 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 is uh, how do they, sculpturing you? Which kinds of books are you reading? Because what you read, uh, the people you spend time with, the, 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 the things you do are determined by the time you have here on earth. If they told you that you really have one month remaining here on earth, would you really want to marry? Because even uh, uh, these bands are supposed to take three months. The wedding bands, they take three months. So which means even you would not even think about marriage. So because you know that you have a lot of time, you don't even think about your call. You don't even think about your purpose. I'm going to tell you we are here for a purpose. There's nothing worse than living a life without a purpose. Why do you wake up in the morning? What did you wake up to do today? And how will you know that you have, you have achieved it? And what will inform you that you have failed to do it? If you don't even know it. If I know that I'm, I'm supposed to be on lunch hour. And I don't know that I'm supposed to be on lunch hour. But I'm, when you check on the roster, it is Dennis Musoke. But Musoke doesn't know that he's supposed to be on lunch hour. In the time of lunch hour, where will he be? By chance, he may be here. By chance, he may be here. The hey, grace of God. But there are many chances that you will not be here. So some many of us wake up because it is morning. And you put on your shoes and you get out and you walk and you find yourself at the shop. You know, we, they are, they are, we, uh, the docile people, those people we call mad. Eh? The reason why they are called mad it is because when, whenever you who is seated here, you who is seated here, once you stand up, Mr. Katete, once you stand up from that chair, it means you have a destination. You have known where you're going. You know. It is only a mad person who gets up and starts walking without a destiny. Now I just want, just to imagine how we are, because some things are so painful, how we are Christians who wake up every morning and you don't know where you're going. With your purpose, I'm talking about purpose. And you 
You know, at times it's painful and you don't, you're looking for the right words that will not offend people because people's hearts are very close. You can just speak one word and someone is offended. Olumu, chiruma nyonti, no olumu echi gambo cho yagalo koze sa, ono onye echi samu samu, kubo olumu izo koze echi gambo, no kosomu timaguwa mtu. I want you to just imagine. Someone's I stand from here. And I get out of that gate. When I don't have where I'm going. That's how someone comes here. And raises their hands. And they start praying. And I wish God as comes and asks them, what are you praying for? For, Many of us don't have answers. We may be praying for things that are below what we came to do. Your purpose. Determines the level of your prayer. Your purpose. Determines, dictates who becomes your friend. Why do you have? Why is that person your friend? If you are How do you choose your friends? Do you remember Mary and Martha? Mary Mangadaren and Mary, mother of Jesus. Maria Mangadaren and Maria, Mama wa Yesu. Do you know what connected them? Mumanye chabagata. Because John the Baptist was here to make way for Jesus. So, it means the mother of Mary Magdalene and the mother, uh, the mother of John the Baptist and the mother of Jesus, they should be connected. They are complimenting each other. Who is your friend? And why? They are tough questions. You need to go back and sit down. And you go back and edit your, 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 your list of friends. And telling them that we have moved together And telling them that we have moved together so long. And we have moved a long time. But we are not going anywhere. You have helped me to go nowhere. So from today onwards, our being together is over. Because each one of us is making us this company getting lost. And many of the people around you, what they are doing, the, the service they are giving you is to make you lost. You find people that have been in church for 20 years, 30 years, no progress. Look at, get close to their life. Just get close to their life. You're going to hear their talk. You're going to hear the way they hold their, 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 their relationships. Their communication is vile. Is vile. And their ministers. And you wonder, 20 years. They tell you have been in, in, in born again for 30 years. But you want to say, maybe Jesus is not serious. Of the two, there is someone serious. who is not serious. Someone goes to the university, studies for only five years, they give them a knife to cut someone's belly. Someone goes to the bush in military. 
six months, they entrust them with a gun, with two magazines, they just need one bullet to kill someone, he finds you at home, you are his wife, he does not get the gun to shoot you. He puts down the gun and he slaps you. Because he's trained, he knows the use of the gun. Just six months. What's wrong with us? Public holiday, we are here learning. Lunch hour, we are here learning. In the nights, we are here learning. On radios, we are here learning. Televisions, we are learning. But these kids that are made doctors, they are royals at, 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 at this university. They are no, if they don't have tuition, they don't go to class. Doctors at times, don't, uh, lecturers at times don't come. And those, they miss out a lot. But for us, lunch time, we are there. We have, we have special messages that come, we put in our radios. You, every time we are listening to the word, maybe the problem is with the word that is given to us. Someone, when someone tells you I've been in church for 15 years and they are... They, 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 it's as if they have never moved one step. There is a problem. It's, it means the problem is either with the Holy Spirit or the Word or us or the way through which we preach, preach that gospel. So please, where is the problem? The problem is with us. We don't know why we are here. Some of you think you came here to visit. You find a Christian who does not have a Bible. And they are very happy and smiling. And you look at them and you're like, are you serious with life you? You ask them, are you reading the Bible? There is one who came to me with a lot of speed. How can I read it? I told him, I gave him phases. I told him, you can read in three, three chapters every day. That is a year. Uh, six chapters every day. That is, I gave them a way to read the Bible. After like five, six months, I came and asked him, where are you, so I said, ah, Dianema. And I felt I, I wanted like to run away from him because foolishness is contagious, it's like flu. You just find yourself till now you're a fool like him. Because how can you say that you love God? And you don't want his word. And you think you'll find out your purpose. If I have a problem with this microphone, I just need to go and connect with the, with the, with the manufacturer to get to know how this, this microphone works. Now, no wonder that person comes to me and tells me about the Bible. You cannot understand them. People, you can understand people in the Bible. People are evil. We are evil. I'm evil. And the Bible tells you, don't trust me. So you start trusting me. The Bible says, don't trust man. He cast his heel, trusts man. Oh, the Bible does not tell us to run away from people, but it tells us not to put our trust in them. They will disappoint. What we do is disappointing. Okay. I want to wind up from here today. 
And I want you to be serious with your life. We are all here to do something. That thing that we are called to do has a time frame. It has a beginning and it has an end. You did not determine its beginning, so you will not determine its end. The man will come and get you any time. And you will find that you have never scratched the surface of your assignment. Never scratched. It is one of the painful moments. Being on earth without being useful. The group of people behind you that are waiting for your rising up. There are people around you. There are people that will only be fed by you. There are people that their spiritual growth is dependent on you. There are people that are in dungeons and it's you to set them free. There are people in this world that will only oh, they will only understand you. You the rest of us are just confusing them if it happened to Paul whenever he came to Jerusalem he caused trouble but whenever he was in the Gentiles he brought harmon and peace when Peter came to the, to the Gentiles he brought trouble when he's in Jerusalem, everything is okay. Your call is geographical. I hope you understand what I've said. It would have been very slow so that you don't say about Dayangua. Or why long is Zako Kubera and Joger and Pola and Pola, Mulemo Gamant in Badinyangu? May the Lord bless you as you start the quest of seeking the Creator, the Creator's mind, the original intent for your coming here. Asta Mubanga Mutandi say, Orugendo Rokubera and Muno Nya and Songarachi or Mutosi Abaton and Abaleta Wanoko. He has a reason. Why is he keeping you? Why is he taking care of you? Why you are not dying? But you are not immune to death. It is just because you still have a, your period is not over. But it is getting shorter every day. May the Lord bless you and give you grace to find that out. Amen. Amen.